Hi, my name is Eddie Richings and I'm a first class law graduate from Oxford Brookes. Thus, I know exactly how daunting it can feel when you begin your LLB studies. So I'm here to hopefully help you by sharing with you some study skills which helped me during my time at Brookes. Coursework. The first thing you must do when approaching a coursework question is read the question through thoroughly. I know this sounds obvious as you think, what else would I do when I approach a course or a question? What I really mean is, you need to fully understand what it is that the question wants you to do and how it wants you to do this. Once you know the issue on which the question focuses on and how it wants you to focus on this issue, you will know what information you'll need to answer the question, thereby allowing you to consistently address the question with only the relevant information. Next, planning. Planning is an important stage of any piece of work that you do. Never write a coursework response until you have a plan in place. Planning allows you to know the direction of your work from start to finish, thereby allowing for a looser style of writing. Planning means identifying the relevant topics. For example, if you have a contract law coursework, it may be the case that you identify the relevant topics as being offering acceptance and consideration. In order to be able to plan effectively in this way, you need to have a general knowledge of the topics in each module. This is easily ascertained by merely doing the background reading and making notes on a regular basis. Next, the assessment criteria. The assessment criteria is an important piece of information which should not be overlooked. It's important to familiarise yourself with the assessment criteria as it allows you to know what it is that your marker is looking for when they come to mark your work. If you could use it as a form of checklist and begin to tick off boxes in the high 2 one and first class areas, then you should be increasing the chances of getting a higher grade in that piece of work. Next, when you start to write, actually want to write your work. Any element of tiredness or lack of focus will show in the quality of your work. I myself have experienced this and it's very stressful. The important thing to do is to remember to keep calm and just write when you're fully awake and fully focused. Don't panic and don't be put off by what your mates say. Even if they say that they've handed in their taught law or public law coursework a month before it's due, it doesn't matter. It's not a race. You don't get any extra marks for putting it in earlier. You don't get any less marks for putting it in closer to the deadline day. As long as you put your work in before the date on which it's due, you're all in with the same chance. Next, formality requirements. Once you've written your coursework and before you hand it in, it's important to have a look through the applicable formality requirements for that piece of work. I say it's important because formality requirements are likely to differ amongst pieces of work in different modules and could even differ amongst pieces of work in the same module. So you're looking at your formality requirements for your OSCOL referencing, text font, text size, headers, footnotes, page numbers, it's important because they're easy marks to lose and could even be the difference between having a first class and a high 2-1 or a high 2-1 and a low 2-1. Finally with coursework, feedback. It is so easy like I've done myself but once you get your coursework results back you focus on the grade and compare it with everyone in your class. At that point you don't forget to look at all your markers comments. At this stage, it is actually the comments which is the most important information as it literally tells you how you can improve on your next piece of coursework or even in your exams because it may be the case that you're making a mistake which may infiltrate its way into your exam preparation which brings me on to my next topic, exam preparation. Firstly, in preparing for your exams, it's important to attend all your lectures and seminars. Your lecturers generally write your exams and so they can give you some form of insight which you wouldn't get in a textbook or a website which you think will be a good alternative. For example, in public law they can go into a lot more depth on a certain issue because that issue is likely to come up in your exams. Additionally, seminars are also really useful because they allow you the opportunity to showcase your knowledge in front of your seminar leader who will give you instant feedback telling you if you've done it right or wrong, thereby allowing you to improve. However, it is not a one-way street. You have to do the prep work. You have to be active, ask questions. I'm sure as you'll come to know, there is no such thing as a stupid question, only the one which is not asked because you'll never find out the answer. Next, reading. You don't need to read a plethora of books. I used to have for each module, one recommended textbook and maybe one or two revision guides. Textbooks are good because they have a great level of detail which is ideal for exam and coursework preparation. 
they also usually have a section which says additional resources giving you references to journal articles which can give you more information on a specific issue. Alternatively, revision guides are a good place to start on modules where you don't quite understand and need to get down to the bare basics and then build yourself up to more complex issues in the textbooks. Although the smaller revision guides look like a tempting substitute for the big burden of reading a recommended textbook, they are not a good substitute given the lesser level of detail they have. Next, notes. I genuinely found that an important part of my exam preparation was having a set of detailed and clearly structured notes for each topic highlighting only the important and relevant information. How I would make my notes is I would make a bullet pointed list of all the core elements for a topic and then under each core element I would make another bullet pointed list outlining the relevant cases and statutory provisions and what they held and or provided. This approach not only allows you to understand what the law is, but it allows you to understand why it's relevant, thereby allowing you to understand when you would use it in an exam. Next, active revision. Notes are great, but you can't take them into your exam. You need to have a way of being able to retain the information you know in your head. The way to do this is through active revision. One way of doing this is by working in groups and quizzing each other on topics and issues. However, I myself prefer to work on my own because I didn't like any distractions around me. How I would do it is I would make my own revision resources. The most important one that I always used was flashcards. I'll take a piece of paper and on one side I'd write the case name or a statutory section and on the other side I would write down the respective ratio or statutory provision. At this point I would then keep quizzing myself with these flashcards 24-7 until I knew them all off by heart. A good place for making resources such as this is on getrevising.co.uk. It's a good website which allows you to not only make flashcards but crosswords, quizzes, anything that helps you revise in the way that you prefer to revise. One really useful form of active revision is practicing past paper questions. They're good because they allow you to understand the nature and structure of the exam, such as how many problem questions and essay questions you can expect to see in your paper in May. However, please do note that all exams are susceptible to change, so what you see in a past paper may not truly reflect what you may see in May. Thus, it's important to ask your lecturer what the exam structure is likely to be. Two really important things to remember when practicing your past paper questions are firstly, one, time conditions. Make sure that you do your questions in the time conditions that you could expect in an exam. It's all well and good if you can do a beautiful public law essay on civil liberties or the UK constitution, but if it takes you about two to three hours to do this, it won't exactly help you for your exam. Secondly, make sure you get your lecturers or seminar leaders to have a look through and mark for your papers. They may not be able to fully mark them in great detail, but what they can do is they can give you good feedback comments telling you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. This is important because it allows you to improve and perfect your answers prior to the exam. Finally, in terms of exam preparation, it's important you manage your time effectively. In order to do your background reading, make your notes, create your revision resources and practice your past paper questions, it's important that you start as early as possible. My exams used to be in May, however I would begin my preparation way back in January. I would begin by compiling together all of my semester 1 topic notes and begin to read ahead for the semester 2 topics, which you can see what you're going to be doing because it's all in the lecture outline in your module handbook. This gave me ample amount of time to prepare and so I felt more calm in the build up to my exams. Only you will know when you're ready and prepared to sit an exam and that is when you are capable of completing every part of an exam in timed conditions. This is the position that you'd want to be in at least a week or two prior to the exam so that it gives you that little period of a week or two to just refresh your mind and recap and just merely do some practices of mock papers just to keep you in the rhythm before your exam. This now brings me on to my finals topic which is sitting the exam. Once you've opened the paper, the first thing you should do is identify which topics are relevant for each question. Say for example in a contract law exam it could be the case that question 1 is privity, question 2 is consideration, question 3 uh, formation of a contract. Once you've seen which questions are the topics that you prefer to do, choose those questions so that you know that for example you're going to do questions 
4, 6 and 7. This saves time later on in the exam of choosing a question once you finish one question. In your exam, you may even have a choice between two types of questions. These are problem questions and essay questions. When approaching a problem question, it's important to read the facts through thoroughly. Afterwards, identify the relevant topics or issues that you will need for the question. Once you've identified the relevant topic, write a basic flowchart of its core elements. For example, in a taught exam, there may be a problem question on vicarious liability. If so, you would write a basic flowchart saying 1. Is the person who committed to tort an employee? If yes, then were they acting within the course of their employment when they committed the tort? And if so, the final one is, is the employer liable or not? In order to produce this basic flowchart, you merely need the core elements of the topic. This is where your clearly structured notes come into play. There are ways in which you can ascertain the core elements. One is by looking at the lecture for that topic, as the notes are generally structured in a way that it highlights the core elements, or you can look at some revision guides. I myself use the Law Express Q&A series. This really helped me because at the start of each chapter, it begins with a flowchart of the relevant core elements for that topic. Once you've identified an issue, employ the IRAC formula. So, in a vicarious liability example, on the issue of whether the person who committed the tort is an employee, state that the issue is whether they are an employee, state what the rule of law is, apply that law to the fact and then conclude as to the likelihood of whether or not they will be seen as an employee. On the other hand, essay questions are slightly different. They require you not only to understand what the law is, but its advantages and disadvantages and maybe some possible law reform ideas. This sounds less appealing than a problem question. However, there is a simple solution in order to improve your essay question ability and this is by simply reading. Your recommended textbooks and journal articles which are noted in your module handbook give you the relevant information, evaluations and analyses in order to be better able at answering essay questions. In preparing for your exam, try to identify which topics are more likely to be an essay question rather than a problem question. A way of doing this is by looking at past paper questions. However, I do strongly advise you not to just merely memorise a plan for a past paper essay question. You need to have a sufficient amount of knowledge in order to be able to adapt to the different kind of question that you could have in the exam. At this point it's important to note that you need to be able to distinguish between a discuss, analyse and evaluate question, as although they're similarly worded questions, they do require you to approach a question differently. If ever you get stuck when structuring out an essay question paragraph, one thing that helped me in this instance is by employing the IRAC formula. So for example, I would find in a public law essay question, say on the constitution, looking at what an issue could be, saying what the law says, analysing, discussing or evaluating that certain law and then concluding that issue by relating it back to the question. Finally, in terms of sitting the exam, try to ensure that you have at least around five minutes to check back through your work. This is where your time condition practice comes into play. Well that concludes this short video on study skills. I hope I've helped you in some way or another. Uh, if you would like to ask me a question directly then please just look me up on Facebook or LinkedIn. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and good luck with your studies.